So what did you think about the fight on Sunday? Uh, it was pretty good. It's pretty good. What did you think? Oh, yeah. I mean, I also thought it was good. I mean, I thought the result, you know, how it ended yeah. was, um, you know, totally fine. I was fine with it. What did you think? Oh, yeah. No, it was, it was fine. It was totally, totally fine. Fine. You fucking. I'm wear you like a fucking mitt. Fuck. What'd you think? Yeah, I mean, I totally thought that it was a good fight. Totally fair. Totally, you know, fair. <laughs> I thought it was totally fair. I loved the fight, actually. I thought it was awesome, dude. It was so good how it ended up. <laughs> It was good. It was good. What'd you think? Oh, man. Yeah, I loved it. I fucking loved it. What did you think? Dude, honestly, I thought it was so sick. I thought it was so fucking sick, dude. What'd you think about it? Oh, man. When I say I had a good fucking time, man, I had a really good time! What's up guys, this is the TMG Podcast. This is today's free episode. If you want this episode ad-free and an extra bonus episode, you can find that right now on our Patreon at patreon.com slash tinyk. And if not, then enjoy this one. Holy fuck, Jamie! Can we get a clip of that deer him? Get him by that car? The mystery of the flying stalkers may soon be solved. If you've never smoked weed at literal Woodstock, you're not a stoner. Goodbye. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. I'm gay as fuck. I'm trying to get my RC The so-called flying stuff. Look at all these fucking chickens. Malone Brown, you hear this whole? No. Malone Brown dick in your mouth? <laughs> no! 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 Please look at all the signs. Fashion your seatbelt and get ready for the base. Today's TMG episode is presented by the ticket app SeatGeek. Live events are back, and if you're looking for tickets to anything, sports, concerts, bull riding, whatever, make sure you download SeatGeek and use promo code TMG for $20 off your first purchase. What would you think of the fight on Sunday? <laughs> I loved it, man. Yeah. No, what a... Awesome. What a stunning piece of entertainment. Yeah, I thought it was awesome. Yeah. Oh. Um, like, who... It's kind of like who fucking cares. Yeah. But... It's, uh, it's it's annoying. Well, you had an, a good insight <clears throat> uh, before, didn't you? When we were talking about it before, what'd you say? Oh, well, yeah, okay. So if we're talking about the fight itself, the thing with Tyron that, you know, was going to play in Jake's favor is that he, <clears throat> at a point, you know, he that just became his fight style. It just became slower, too calculated, and a lot of people criticize him for not getting active. And... He's done the same thing in MMA. That's why, you know, he's, he's struggled to win rounds in like the later part of his MMA career because he was way, way too patient. It just didn't seem like, you know, he, he didn't jump on Logan. He, he had Logan, or Logan, he had Jake hurt like I, I would say two times in the fight. I felt he, he had him uh, scared. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that's why he tweeted this updated status, retired boxer. So you're saying he's retired now? Maybe. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe he's, you know, may, maybe he's a... Uh, God, that's so... <sighs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, he felt it. That, that... I know, it's... Yeah. It's annoying that, like, he won on points or whatever. And he, he even afterward, you know, everyone was like, oh, Tyron, you're going out bad, like this and that, you know, and, and Tyron's like, let's run it back. That to me, you know, that was like promo, but that's also like Tyron is a fighter. Yeah. So he's all, he's always going to be down for the most part. Yeah. And as much as Jake, Jake tried to make it about other things, you know? And it was so funny how like 
Yeah, I'm, I'm bouncing around here, but the thing that really annoys me about the two of them is they're such snake oil salesmen. Like they're such con artists. Like they're sitting there 30 seconds prior, you know, Logan's going, I said, my brother, sorry, I lost my voice from cheering so hard. My brother, you know, he, Tyron Woodley's a, a UFC welterweight champion. You know, they're, 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 co like, they're bigging up all his accolades, all his accomplishments in combat sports. And then Tyron goes, fuck you, man. Let's run it back. I fucking, I had you scared. And the thing that saved you was the ropes. Let's do it again. Cause I'm gonna fuck you up. And what does Logan do? You're old news fam. Oh, well, you talking about Jake? Or Logan? Uh, in the post fight. Okay. Sorry, okay. I'm talking about post fight Got when it. they're asking, because Logan is standing beside Jake and Ariel Helwani asked Logan, like, oh, what do you think? I see. Okay. And I just, that was like the theme through the whole promo. It was like, on one hand, they underscore all the all the great things about Tyron as a fighter. And then they'll, then they'll down him, you know, oh, he's a loser and this and that. And they're just such like, their fan base are people that hear the last thing they say and that's what they echo and repeat and they just have no fucking brain like there's no brain cells yeah it just pisses me off like that's how they get by yeah kid throws out a, you know throws out some jabs like yeah in terms of boxing he did win you know he he was more active he had more i it shouldn't be scored that way especially no, with these it, fights that are like exhibition fights it should be scored I, I agree who got the closest to getting knocked out that person should lose i think that's how a lot of people feel you know unfortunately that's not how boxing is scored but yeah like anytime uh, the, here's the thing I loved, and I wish people would pick up on this in some capacity. First of all, pre-fight, Logan's going, I mean, Tyron's going to get knocked the fuck out. I mean, my brother's right hand is a cannon, dude. It's a missile. No. <laughs> didn't, didn't do anything to Tyron. It landed a couple times. It didn't do shit. Yeah. And when you look at all the times Tyron got popped, his fighter instinct is there to trade. He got hit, and he was immediately throwing something back. So never did Jake really stun him. You know, that that right hand was a nothing. And Jake is heavier than Tyron naturally, I believe. Right. I think Jake walks around like like over 200, and Tyron, you know, fights 190. Like, I think he's kind of naturally at his weight. So everyone's saying, oh, Jake's the bigger dude. Tyron's not going to knock him out. Tyron needs to be scared. He's the smaller guy, blah, blah, blah. And it's like... Jake is sitting there crossing his feet like an amateur, like, cause he is. And I, I don't know. After, after like rounds one and two, he was just running, yeah. throwing little hands out in there. He, he had a couple good combos, but. He never did any real damage, though. Tyron no. never looked like he was in trouble. No. And this moment right here, yeah. it looked like Jake was in big trouble. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and a slightly <clears throat> more competent boxer, you know, uh, it, the way I see it, even though Tyron's. Um, Tyron's uh, nature is to be a bit more like conservative as far as fighting. I feel that it's natural that he kind of just like stayed in the center and stayed on a single line, like moving back and forth because he's just learned how to box. So like his footwork isn't going to be totally there. So I feel even in the moments where he had Jake in trouble, maybe he just didn't have all the tools like to know how to like step forward and like be confident to like, oh, I could, I could put him away right here. Yeah, I don't know why he didn't do that, especially in this moment right here. It's like attack. He's he's that's the problem. He's he does he did that in MMA, and right. that's why it's so it was ideal for Jake because Jake got those moments to rest. Yeah. But a slightly more competent boxer with his with Tyron's power would put Jake away. Like me or you would have like in that scenario, we would have we would have been way better. We would have I mean we would have like pushed forward, would attacked. We definitely would have finished the job. We, oh, hundred percent. Like as two know. guys watching from our couches. Yeah, and like with like, a podcast. Why did he just attack like? I would have. Yeah. In that situation. Why didn't he just kill him right there? Yeah. Like, for example, I would have done that. Mm -hmm. That's what, something I, I would have done, and I would have thought of that in the moment and then done it. Absolutely. Yeah. And the fact that he didn't, it made just me feel like a little bit better of a boxer than him. Mm -hmm. I would have done that in the moment. Oh, yeah. No. Like, as, as someone who uh, eats three meals a day. Right. Like, I definitely would have had the sense and really the skill set to go forward and, like, get the dub. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. And like for me as a former athlete, um, you know, 2008 Olympic trials, mm -hmm. him 12th, you know, someone like that, you know, with that sort of athletic mindset, yeah. you know, it's used to pressure, performing under pressure, yeah, especially uh, in that scenario, I would have, you know, kind of kept attacking. Yeah. I would have knocked his ass out. No, you for sure would have won. <clears throat> you know, as a guy who like works out three to four days a week. Yeah. 
I think I would have did a way better job. Yeah. Way more fight IQ. As a dude who's never even sparred before, right. I have pretty good idea of how to win that fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Coming from someone who's really good at watching fights. Yeah. Actually, I'm not even that good of a watcher of fights. Mm -hmm. I'm middle of the road. I think I would have known what to do in that situation. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the thing that frustrates me the most is everyone thinks because Jake got a few combos in, he's like, oh, you know, he's like kind of like deserving of all this respect. Even people I, I know that like boxing are like coming around on him and being like, hey, man, he went in there, he did his thing. I'm like, fuck him, bro. <laughs> he only likes boxing as much as it makes him money. Yeah, so that's that's the point. I think that's why he said retired. Was that was he talking about himself there? Maybe he was yeah. talking about Tyron. I mean, that's the best move he could possibly do right now, though. Of course. He made like 50 million bucks off this shit this year alone. Yeah, he's done. And then he's just going to be like, he got scared, clearly. He's like, yeah. I don't have it, so I'm just going to retire right now. Yeah. With a winning, with a undefeated record. I mean, that's so annoying. He just. Yeah. He just. No. You know. He just, he just gets away with it. The other thing that. I've said before that I didn't have like a ton of confidence saying, but I feel a lot of a lot more confidence saying now is he like, it, like Tyron's 39, you know, like he's older and he should be slower. He should be like his age should show a little bit. Tyron's hand speed was like six times Jake's. Jake's hand speed looks so dog shit. And granted, he's like he's not he's just begun like began boxing. But I say that to say. He doesn't show like, how do people not look at him and, and see, oh, this is a guy like just learning how to do it. He's not like some stellar athlete. He doesn't have like some X factor. He doesn't go in there and like move really clever. And he's like really, a really special athlete in there. It's like, no, he's just big. And he kind of lumbered around and he weathered the storm. And it's like, that's worthy of all this fucking like, oh man, Jake Paul's a tough guy. It's like, is he? Yeah. I don't know, man. I, you know, I would have got cleaned from that hit by Tyron, so maybe I have no place to talk. No, we wouldn't have. No. No, you're right, yeah. No. As someone who eats carbs in every single meal, mm -hmm. for every meal. Yeah. As someone who eats carbs, the entirety of the meal is yeah. carbs. Every meal of the day. I think I could have taken that punch and not been knocked out. Yeah. And in fact, won the fight. Yeah, as, as someone who... Uh has ridden a bike before, I probably could have taken that hit pretty easy. Yeah. I, think I just would have rolled with it. Yeah. You know? Because, dude, like, I've, I've ridden bikes. I've, I've been on a subway before. I've taken the bus. Yeah. Those are all things that prepare you for a moment like that. Totally. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I wear pants. Most people you know, don't like wearing pants. I wear pants sometimes. Yep. And I think that, you know, just that mentality I have, like, to wear pants, if Tyron would have hit me with that shot, I'd have been like, dude, I, I wear pants, like, almost every day. Like, right. In 80 degrees. I know what you're saying. I personally, like as someone who did the Stairmaster yesterday for 15 minutes, uh -huh. like without stopping either. Yeah. So it was like straight through. That's crazy. Level 10 mm -hmm. too. So wow. Like, it's pretty fast. Yeah. As someone who could do that, like I could see myself getting in the ring and just kind of winning. Yeah. So. Yeah, Jake honestly should retire because like, you know, after that, like, horrible performance he put on, it just made me think, like, obviously we'd go in there and win. Yeah. So, like, when we start boxing, like, he definitely doesn't want to see us in there. No. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah good, good, good choice, bro. Yeah. Good choice. Yeah, get out while you still can. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> shit's about to get shut down once we're in there, bro. Yeah, dude. It's going to be crazy when people sign up to fight us not realizing it's two versus one. <laughs> yeah, we tag each other in like yeah. wrestling style. No, 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 we're both in there. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, like one of us is standing and they're like, "Oh, one on one," and then the other one jumps in. It's like, wait a second. It's like, yeah, it's a twofer. Yeah, it's a bogo. No, we're on each other's shoulders. Yeah, in a trench coat. Yeah, put them up. So we look like we're, you know, five feet, ten feet, ten feet tall. Put up your dukes. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this episode is sponsored by SeatGeek. Live events are back, and that means you're getting 20 bones, $20 <laughs> off tickets at SeatGeek with promo code TMG. If you don't know what SeatGeek is, they're a ticketing app that makes buying tickets super simple. Uh, we've got the app on our phones. Certainly do. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm personally going to go see Green Day with Fallout Boy. Uh, um, make that we're both personally going to see exactly. Green Day Exactly. What's with cool Fallout about Boy. this app 
is that when we go see this show, they map out the stadium and they label them so you know you're getting a good deal. Green, of course, means good. Red means bad. <laughs> so we're not getting a red seat. No, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. But is there, a, is there a red seat when you're watching Green Day? That's a good point, actually. Um, and if you're worried, uh, don't worry because we've got the hookup. Use the code TMG for $20 off your tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with the promo code TMG. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. I don't know. Sorry, I was... I like want to check myself for being all like philosophical or whatever because like fuck this kid man like I I just hate that anyone is like you know respects this in any way. Well, he doesn't fucking care about boxing. Like that's, to me, that's what I, I was just thinking that. Like, sorry, go ahead. I just I just feel like what frustrates me about the whole event is it to me it it's like it just mocks like the institutions of things and like the the point of being committed to something and like the people who actually do care about boxing, like the dude love like two or three fights before. Um, I forget his first name. Uh, he fought the kid who looked like Steve will do it. Did you watch that? No, fight? I didn't. I didn't watch any of it. Oh, and I also did not buy it. I, so. I definitely did not buy it. Oh, you did. Tommy Fury was fighting. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I kind of looked at it as like you're kind of supporting the other fighters. Yeah. yeah. You know? I, uh, anyway, Tommy Fury looked like shit in there. Oh, my God. <laughs> he, he looked really? so horrible. Him and Jake should fight because they both look so confused with their own bodies. <laughs> yeah. Tommy looks like he is like not totally used to the steroids that he's been yeah, taking. Yeah, or the length of his arms. Or... Like he's gigantic. Yeah. Like just picture that guy. His mm -hmm. arms are like unnaturally fucking huge yeah i think he like ballooned he took something and like in one year has doubled in size and he's like yeah. not used to his like new surface area yeah he took the he took the arm steroids that make them longer not thicker <laughs> no, no but they're thick as fuck too yeah but you know he already had the thick yeah so his, his his training camp they thought oh we'll lengthen you can you bring up a picture of him tommy fury and to you yeah, know he took the lengthening steroids <laughs> To be fair, like, you know, he might have he might have just been like jet lag, nervous, whatever. Uh, uh, he was fighting a dude like seven inches shorter than him as well. Yeah, everyone was being critical, saying like, "Dude, you're fighting a, a like a one fifty five er. You should be putting him in the dirt." And searching on, searching on Twitter because there was a good meme about like him and Tyson being in the same gene pool and having like opposite bodies. But yeah, him him and Jake should fight. Tommy had this thing. He's like, "Oh, I, I, I approached Jake after the fight with no security. It was just the two of us, and I could tell there was nothing in his soul." And I was like, "Maybe because he was tired, though." Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll give Jake that. He probably was tired from getting clapped in the face. Yeah. There, look at that picture. Click on that. Click on that picture so we can see it. Look yeah. at his fucking arms. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Yep. It looks like he's wearing one of the suits that we have. Yeah, serious. <laughs> I mean, he's 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 like a he's how you would create yourself in a wrestling game. Yeah. Yeah. Just put all the points on biceps. Yeah. And shoulders. Yeah. I mean, he look <laughs> He looks like inflated. Like he doesn't even look like a real human. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was not looking super sharp in there. Yeah, so like you were saying like just the whole, the whole, the, the whole point, like in order to drive ticket sales and to, you know, not be laughed at or whatever, he was like preaching, constantly preaching and repeating the message that he's taking this seriously. Yeah. He's boxing his ass off. He wants to like be good at this sport and like give respect to the sport and he wants to help the sport and then like two matches in one year and he's like, I'm fucking done. Yeah. I, I came here. I just rinsed the money out of this. I just, yeah. Oh, just fucking coins pouring out yeah and i'm just gonna leave it in the fucking dirt yeah you know <laughs> and, and that that's where and now he's gonna move on to nfts or something next and all his campaigns about like fighter pay and this and that it's it's how is anyone this stupid to like buy any of it you know it it's like tyron said tyron's like he wants to play the heel and then he he plants all these seeds and then he wants a pat on the back after he goes in there and gets kind of like walked down and and you know he he might have had like more combos here and there, but he he was running away. Yeah, and that that man was scared. And for all that fucking hoorah he puts on, 
that's where I, I feel comfortable just like bagging on them because you're gonna sit there and chirp like you're the like you're the big man, like you're the tough guy. You got walked down that whole fight. You almost got your shit canned. You know, I think I think he knows. Whoever's next opponent has to be has to be dog shit. Because e- even a, a, a debut boxing match like that, like he wasn't ready. Yeah. <laughs> Big ass breaths after round two. <gasps> he was breathing deep, <laughs> real deep. Anyone, I, can you imagine, dude, anyone just a bit more fluid, touching up like, like body shots and stuff? I'd be a wrap. The other thing that was really interesting that I did like about this is, so he beat Ben and he beat, um, uh, what's his name, the basketball player, Nate Robinson. But both of those were so quick that he never had to be a boxer. Yeah. So actually what I liked about this going the full eight is now whoever goes at him next, they get to see his full fucking performance. Yeah. They get to see every aspect of his game. Yeah. But it's not going to happen because he's retired. Yeah. Yeah, there's no point of even harping on this anymore. Yep. He's literally. I'm saying he's gonna go on to the next thing. No, yeah, he's never gonna fight again. Fifty million bucks in one month, and then he's gonna move on to the next thing, and then that's like the problem. It's just like I don't know. Like, I mean, I don't. I just hate that. I don't know. Well, I hate that because they're doing it with crypto now. Yeah, like they're back at it. Logan's back at it. He's coming out with it. He sees the crypto punk thing. He sees the. Um, board eight yacht club thing, and he's like, I got to do my own. I have to, I have to cash in on this. Like, yep. I'd be stupid not to. So now he's doing some NFT game, and I don't know if it's legit or not. I have no idea, but I sent this because I was looking into this to like the you know secondary market on the original NFT, which in the first NFT boom, you know that was what like two months ago or something like that, three months yeah. ago, maybe longer. But like when everyone was tweeting about NFTs, 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 and he was like, I got to get in on this, and he did, and he made like five million bucks. Right? Yeah. Selling these things for one Ethereum each, which at the time was like 1500 bucks, I think. Right? Now they're going, st- scroll down. They're going for 0.14, 0.1. And there's like five being traded every day. So 10% of their original value. AKA, the, and there's no market for it. Yeah. So there's, he sold like what, 10,000 of these or maybe more? Yeah. 10,000 of these at like 1,000 to 1500 bucks per pop. Yeah. And, all, that's just waste that's just money that his fans just gave to him mm-hmm. I, that's that's the part that's crazy is these dudes just scam their audience like left and right and somehow like somehow people you know I mean obviously it's business so in business people don't care about shit like this but even Showtime I'm, I was thinking who cares that he brings the fighters their biggest payday yet because their fighters won't get a bigger payday after that. Like him parading around that he cares about like fighter pay and stuff is not even a band-aid. It's like a one-time solve. He's not like actually changing anything in the institution of fighting. And and so I, I feel like that's, that shouldn't even afford him credibility. And more than that, why is Showtime even lending their name to this fucking asshole? Like someone behind the scenes has to know like, yo, this dude is going to partner with us big up his name and then quit on us the same way they've done it with NFTs and everything else. Yep. So why the fuck do people keep partnering with these dudes and like giving them a spot? And that's funny. That's all it's about. I, I know, but that's, that's the it. part that pisses me off. It's just like it. not one person that goes, not nah, fuck that man. We just, we just can't, it doesn't matter. Like, cause I don't know. Yeah. It is all money. It was dumb. Oh, also, um, the dink, dink doink. I was going to bring that up. Yeah. Dink doink. What's up with that? It's in the dirt. Yeah. Completely. Yep. They, they, the website's down, they banned it. So it's like, I think to them, it's like, these are exper- experiments. We're just like, you know, iterating fast. But like in a classic startup business sense where like fast iteration is necessary to like find product market fit. Yeah. You don't, it's not at the expense of other people. Yeah. All this shit is at the expense of people who are putting money into these projects and then losing it. Yep. Well, you know what it is, man. It's all kids. And it's like the parents just don't get who these kids are. You know, the uh, well, last thing I'll say that really got on my fucking nerves was when Jake Paul's like, oh, like to the kids, I'm like Mike Tyson, right? And the sad part is, is that is true. But the part that doesn't resonate with people is, or at least like with Mike Tyson, when that dude was coming up, he was a star and he was special because he was good at what he did. Yeah. 
and that's how it like it used to be you had to be pretty good like good at what you it'd be pretty goo at what you do you know like think about any great athlete anyone who's an icon they're good at what they do and the thing that jake is good at is scamming (laughs) yeah like he's not a good boxer he's decent but he's not a great he's not mike tyson he's not fucking like 17 and 0 at you know 19 or whatever you know coming back from with a crazy like comeback story as a human being he's a dude who knocked out a fucking guy off a hip replacement surgery and a and a retired basketball player yeah yeah i think like you know when we we were talking about david arquette and we we're talking about um bo burnham and you know how much energy and effort and dedication they put into one thing not knowing for sure whether yep. or not it was going to work yep right yeah, that is you know on the one side of the scale where it's like people really appreciate that stuff and it doesn't always work out yeah right for them it did but then there's a polar opposite side of the scale where it's like you know they're like well i can make how much money for not doing that much yep okay let's do it and you could call that smart but it doesn't command respect and i yeah. think they get really mad when people don't respect them like his constant narr- narrative was like respect me as a fighter i'm a fighter and no was, nobody was like no but then you know he does it one time and then he just stops yeah and it's like well this is the kind of shit that doesn't command respect is yeah. when you don't respect yeah it back it it's it's so annoying man <laughs> i just like i don't get it i don't get how you're a fan of a person like this if you're older than 12 which is probably a lot of the you know that's all it is that's all it's ever been yeah you know, 12-year-old kids run the world, I guess. Fortnite. And anything that you feel like you can't understand is 12-year-old kids. Yeah. Fortnite, Jake Paul, uh, what else? Hey, guys, we want to take a quick break to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Public. Public.com is an investing app where you can buy and sell stocks, follow investors, and share ideas. What's different about Public is that you can follow other users' portfolios, including people like us, Philip DeFranco, Emma Chamberlain, Graham Stephan, you know, thousands more. Uh, we're both on the app. You can find us at Cody Co and at Noel Miller. Public doesn't sell your trades to market makers like other investment apps. Uh, you'll get a free slice of stock when you go to public.com slash TMG and download the public app. Yeah, you can get started today with just as little as $1. So what are you waiting for? Go to public.com slash TMG to get a free stock slice. Uh, click the link in the description. Did you see the Fortnite Martin, Martin Luther, Luther King, King shit? Thing? What? <laughs> oh my God, dude. Oh my God. Play that shit. What? Like, uh like a even this bro like this to me is like this is not clever this is like making a mockery of something like really important well okay this is this is this is a greater thing that's going on right now the addison ray movie yeah it's all the fucking remakes of these movies that are eating shit and tarnishing the legacy yeah. of these original pieces of art or yeah. cultural moments in history yeah that were incredible yep and People now, like these corporations and, you know, boomers now in these leadership positions are like, let's just take these and just shit on them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like the worst thing I saw. I saw a TikTok of a kid like clowning this and like maybe anyone else would say like, oh, you guys are comedians. You should laugh at this. But this is like, this is depressing. This is. This is so depressing. A kid made a TikTok of Martin Luther King speaking and he goes, wait, wait for it, wait for it. And it, it cuts to Martin Luther King and he's like, it's the guy from Fortnite, like trying to be funny. Ugh. And that that's just depressing, man. Yeah, that's really sad. That like, that's like on the surface, like you might chuckle, but then you think about it, you're like, that's fucking, ugh. That's what he's, that's what he's gonna be to all these twelve. Yeah, and when kids. and when and and if someone goes to like discuss this in like a serious context, you're gonna have all these twelve year olds that are like. We know this from Fortnite. We know this from Fortnite. And they'll they'll mock it and shit on it and not care. No, that was one thing that, Kyle, was it you that said this? Or Luke, was that there was a video of a kid like watching the speech and, and just doing like, just going like this. Yeah, of course. Of course. Like what a, what a bozo fucking move. What is the point of this? Like, are they doing other like cultural moments as well? I'm, I'm not sure, moments? but like, all the money and time like that went to deving this weird one-time experience like why don't you just take all that money and resource and like actually put it towards a community of people (laughs) if you're trying to like if you're trying to put the light on like the black community why don't you just like take the bazillions of dollars that you make all the fucking time 
and do something with it. You know what I mean? Like, you know what's sick about this is like, what the fuck is in the, for like, what is in the, the store on the day this event happens? Can you get a Martin Luther King skin? Yeah. It's like, like what weird perverted, like yeah, capitalist shit is going on in there? Like Marshmallow is playing a set outside. Yeah. And fucking what's his face? David remixing, Guetta. <laughs> remixing the speech. You know, shout out to George Floyd. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I like, like, people would maybe would say oh we're like reading into it too deep or whatever but i don't think so man it, it it's feels, definitely weird we're in this like strange state where everything is a like it's just being churned out for money you know and maybe yeah. it's always been this way and we're just like hitting a point that we're like starting to see it i guess i don't know man it, it feels like at some point things were genuine yeah i mean things had no, still is like we talk about white lotus yeah. Like there's still so much, so many like genuine, uh, you know, sincere pieces of art that are being made right now that are amazing. Yeah, but that's not but the But then there's like that... this layer of people that are just, I don't even, like they're just trying to take the easy way out. I just don't even feel that anything genuine gets like a proper spotlight or like any bit of acknowledgement because it's all like, it's all just, you know, engagement driven. And it's it's just this rolling 30% of, teenagers that everyone's trying to tap into yeah it's just fucking annoying play this Morty, going to... wait what is there music or um <laughs> what's happening yeah, morty just hit the wall in front of martin luther king and <laughs> someone has like a like a morty skin and they're hitting the wall in front of martin luther king it's just like i can't even like really laugh this is just just this is because just, they had to they had to have known this was gonna yeah. happen yeah what other like outcome did they expect yeah from this this is depressing man <laughs> it's like but um speaking of which you watched yeah, I watched he's she's all, all she's all that or he's I watched all that? I watched the Addison Ray remake that he's all that. And then I and then I watched She's All That afterward. Did you really? I watched the whole thing afterward. <laughs> just to be like, okay, let me make sure I'm not full of shit. I didn't finish the Addison remake. Um I mean apparently the original isn't that great either. I, it's it's it. it's not, but I, there's some mm. so first of all <laughs> You know, on like I looked up the budget, okay, for it was two hundred dollars. No, no, no. For well, so the budget for He's All That, which was the Netflix remake with Addison, was twenty million. What? Yeah, twenty but, million and nineteen million went to Addison. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's what happened, dude. I, I was gonna say like my favorite, or sorry, my least favorite genre of content right now is low budget Netflix rom-com teen movies like kissing booth all those Bro. fucking stupid ass movies with noah whatever in them and i thought this was one of them no i literally i saw the trailer for this and i was like 250 bucks must be the budget for this yeah it's shot like somehow like half of it is shot like 60 frames per second which what? for anyone who's not a film nerd it, it looks like real time like it doesn't feel like film uh, the color grading, like the set design, there's none. They just like went on PeerSpace.com and were like, um, house with girls bedroom. Dude, 100%. That's what I'm saying. Everything in these movies feels like it's it's like empty. Yeah. No, there's, there's no like intention behind it. it. And so it starts on like, also, why call it He's All That? Why not just call it the Addison Ray movie? <laughs> in parentheses, this kind of leans into He's All She's All That. And they try to do this callback where like her mom is who played the uh, the main female character in She's All That, and that part completely escapes you. You know, like you you that part isn't even like made important. And I like how they like try to shoehorn that in there. Like, oh, it's artistic. It's like, it's not. There's a moment where Addison Ray goes through mail <laughs> and the mail looks like mail someone brought from their house okay. because they forgot to get mail for the scene. And, and the way she just like, oh my God, dude. 
all like the framing and everything, it's like how uh, a 16 year old would shoot a movie. Okay. None of the shots feel cohesive or whatever. It's just like they're just grabbing parts. The editing is atrocious. The way it like goes, <laughs> something will happen and it'll just like, it'll fast forward in, in a way that you don't know what just happened. It feels like a, like a Lele Pons YouTube video. Okay. Like it's like five minute scenes that are supposed to be connected, but they're not. Listen, dude, I got to take a break real fast to say that we all shop online. Yep. Yeah, we do. And we've all seen that promo code feel taunting us at checkout. Mm -hmm. Use me. Use me. Yeah. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Yeah, Honey supports over 30,000 stores online. That's 29,999 plus one. Uh, they range from sites that have tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. Uh, imagine, just picture this, okay? okay? You're shopping on one of your favorite sites. Okay. Oh, now you're going to go yeah. check out. Okay, got it. Uh, okay. Now the honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupons. What's that? Apply coupons. <gasps> Use me. Use me. <gasps> apply coupons. Now you wait a few seconds as honey searches those coupons you can find for that site. Oh my God. Bam. It found one. Wait, I'm just watching the prices drop right now. Yeah, you are. It's just like that. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. Mm -hmm. It won't be me. It'll be you. Yeah. Uh, we've used Honey before on all the gear that we buy in this, you know, uh, spaceship. And yep. it helps save, uh, save us money, even in space. Honey has found over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. All right. Uh, if you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free. And installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the podcast. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash TMG. That's joinhoney.com slash TMG. Anyway, so there's a couple funny things. The crux of the film, or like what kind of like kicks off the drama, is Addison Ray gets angry at her boyfriend because she walks in on him cheating on her and she's live streaming. The whole reason she's there, she's bringing him like a birthday gift. Okay. And she's live streaming at her front because she's like a famous influencer. And so a primary issue in the film right away is that she fucking, she gets mad at him. And then while live streaming, she's crying because she's so upset and everyone makes fun of her because she has snot coming out of her nose <laughs> and they're all referring to her as bubble girl. So she loses tons of tons of followers because you know that's what he's all that is about is your social media empire fuck yeah and then you know on we time, more we need more movies about social media yeah and on time guess who calls her her main brand sponsor courtney kardashian okay aka someone who's is basically courtney kardashian and she just dogs out addison for having fucking snot bubbles in her nose and hangs up <laughs> and it's like all right so what's this movie about so it's like that's how she like loses popularity. Is she that. in high school? Yeah. Is it's also weird how wrong they get high school. Yeah. Like why in every single one of these movies, it's always like so cookie cutter, like nineties style high school where people are calling other people bubble girl. It's like that's not what it is. No. These no. kids are vaping, tell them to, telling the, like each other to go kill themselves on TikTok. So, that's what bullying is, right? So that's where I say she's all that got it right. First of all, the first minute of She's All That, probably like a $200 scene. Okay. Yeah. Right? And it just, it felt so much more, by the way, She's All That was shot on $10 million. Okay. So half the budget. Okay. And it's an infinitely better movie. Uh, the dialogue and shit is really corny. Like it, there's a lot of cheesy shit in there, but there's also like shades of art that make it kind of endearing. But in the first like six or seven minutes of the movie, when they're establishing all the characters, the main like girl who's like supposed to be a loser or whatever she's in art class and her teacher's like hey you know like i want to see more from you and these two girls walk up to her and the most like you know the, these gothic looking chicks and they're like hey you know we've been looking at your art and ugh, we just we notice how dark it is one of the girls goes yeah dark is dark rules and you're like okay <laughs> And then they start going on about her art and they're like, we were also thinking how like great artists don't get recognized, and, you know, and, unless it's like a posthumous way, you know, it's like until they're gone, like Picasso, the like Basquiat. And they're like, yeah. So we were thinking maybe it'd be better if you just killed yourself. <laughs> 
That's in the first eight minutes of the movie. No eight, eight or way. nine minutes. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's that's real. It hasn't changed. Yeah. But somehow these networks think that they shouldn't show the real version of high school. You know? Yeah. That's the other part is there's so many obvious brand moments in the remake. I'm like, this budget is already so dog shit. Yeah. You needed brand money too? Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm not, uh, film, film nerd shit is not interesting, but it's just crazy how they could have fucked it up. They could have shot it the exact same way as the original. It would have been great. Yeah. Minus the fact that she's all that had so many people in there. Freddie Prince, Paul Walker. Yeah, it was um, like, wasn't it like the Buffy. who's who of stars at that point? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, so is Addison Ray though. Yeah, definitely, yeah. She is. Yeah. I'm saying like she's like mainstream. She's like... In terms of people who watch those movies, right? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, Bryce Hall's and he's all that. Is he really? Yeah, for a moment at the bar. I found that out through Twitter. I didn't make it that far into the movie. Wait, bring up that TikTok that you just had listed. Uh, go to the go back to the, yeah, yeah, popular TikTok roasting the movie. Dog, the cinematography is so bad. And it's the one time where it actually matters. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> it is yeah it's, how was addison ray's acting bad was it unfortunately huh it's a I, like i bad in the sense that i don't know if it was necessarily her fault right it could have been directing her that way right because she was delivering the lines in like a cheesy way like they did in the original the original like lines like are delivered really corny but the original feels more like just like a goofy like musical like there's a really funny moment where like Freddie Prince gets like dumped and they have like a shot of like the entire like like lunch area of students like looking over and then after he gets dumped he like looks over at this crowd and they all like resume what they're doing and it it like that part feels charming cuz it's like oh okay like that's cheesy but that's yeah. funny. Yeah. You know, 100 people like gaggling at you getting dumped. Yeah. Those are these really dope like meta moments where when Freddie Prince's girl comes to dump him uh they're talking and then in the background two of her friends cross frame in the background in bikinis and the camera like pans off them and they're at the spring break party that she's describing oh sick so then they're like walking through the party and oh, it's like sick. doing these like weird intercuts between the party and their conversation and it's like that moment in and of itself is like that shit's on you know whatever it doesn't even matter cuz he's all that wasn't trying to be artistic but it's a ballsy ass thing to to take this role because like yeah. the amount of traffic Netflix drives is unbelievable. Just look at Too Hot to Handle, any of these shows yeah. where people just instantly become stars afterwards because millions of people are on the Netflix homepage every single day looking for new shit to watch, right? Mm -hmm. They knew this was going to be front and center, top of the most trending. And she took the lead. And as far as I know, she's never had acting experience before. Maybe she has. I don't know. But still, it's ballsy as fuck to take that. It's just, and just you know you're going to get slammed. It's not, it was not fair for her, I think. I mean, not fair in that, like, you know, anyone could be like, oh, she's made a ton of money. Like, don't feel bad for her. I feel bad for her in the sense that she's young and her, it's probably her stupid ass parents that are like, you should definitely do it. And her dumbass agent was like, definitely you need to do this. I mean, I don't think, yeah, it was, I don't think it's a bad idea though. Even if she like crashes and burns and gets made fun of for this, it's like still just like getting in front, like getting on a platform like this yeah. in front of people. But you're going to get cast for more shit just out of that. Yeah, but it it sort of begs the question, like, you know, I don't know. She she can act like immune and all that, but is she? Yeah. Could like will she watch this back and like be like, fuck, I want to blow my brains out? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's the part I think that's not fair. Yeah, I see. Like she's still a kind of a kid. Like if you're 22 and you got a lead role like that, and the whole of the internet is like, dude, you're fucking useless. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Yeah, rough script for anyone to chew on. You could even see like the more straight up actors, like the people who aren't necessarily influencers, fucking struggling with that dialogue. <laughs> really? Really trying to like, like, all right, like, trying to give it some sort of natural. Yeah, feel. they're like trying to capture the essence and then <laughs> so many intercuts of like people not naked. Why don't you scram, bubble girl? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, why don't you scram out of here, Bubble Girl? Nah, I can't. Bubble Girl just doesn't work. 
Can I call her something else? No, you have to call her Bubble Girl. What about it's like Snot Nose? Like something a little bit no, more. No, Bubble natural. Girl. It's hashtag Bubble Girl. Actually, girl? hold on. Getting a note from the. Copy. Producers are requesting you say hashtag Bubble Girl. <laughs> so, so scram hashtag it's, Bubble so Girl. So it's, it's, why don't you scram with your Beats pill hashtag Bubble Girl? That's the line. That's the full line. I'm sorry. This just feels like a moment on Love Island. Like, am I. Sp- Really supposed to, yeah, yeah. We need you to call out the brand. Yeah, we have to. this moment's important. Yeah, and and Addison, when she says, "Why don't you scram hashtag Bubble Girl?" Make sure you hold up the Beats pill to your face before you cry. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Action. Sc- scram, Bubble Girl. California girls were undeniable. <laughs> Teenage gen- bikinis on top. I'm out. <laughs> That's another thing, bro. For like the massive presence of a TikToker, no money spent on music or score. Yeah. It is literally all like stock, like yeah. YouTube shit. Oh yeah. That's yeah. I noticed that too about these movies. They don't they don't do the licensing deals. Mm. That's actually what's good about like HBO and like their version of these reality sh- TV shows like F Boy Island and shit like that. It's like they actually dope they get dope music. Yeah. Yeah. It fills it with life. Mm-hmm. But this, every time you watch one of these, it's epidemic sound. It feels like a YouTube video. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it, like the, the shit opens up and I'm, you know, typically I feel that films either open on like some really intense scene, like in silence that like sets the tone or it's going to open on some kind of, some kind of like score or soundtrack that's like, damn. Yeah. Like she's all that. It's like grunge music for the yeah. first minute and it's like the girl's painting and it's like yeah. you just get the vibe yeah. you're like okay yeah in this movie it's audio jungle audio jungle and then it's just addison in like a fucking you know <laughs> mcdonald's ball pit yeah <laughs> eating a fucking mm, i love waking up and eating my mcdonald's cheeseburger before starting my day <laughs> There's a laugh track too. <laughs> yeah. She takes a bite out of that. Oh my God, let me check my Samsung smartphone for all my text messages that I've received through WeChat. My Samsung foldable smartphone, <laughs> Galaxy S5. <laughs> Click. I love the way it folds. <laughs> Easy to put in my pocket. Bro, the biggest fucking violation that they make in the first five minutes is on screen graphics. She what? like begins a live stream, and instead of spending a hundred fucking dollars, to get the shot through an actual phone and like get some cheap VFX on it to make it feel like it was through a phone, they just put it right on the frame. <laughs> yes, I love that. You know, and the graphics are a little bit wrong and crisp and clean yeah. and just like <laughs> yeah, it's like solid a school it's project. A camera. Oh, dude, what is happening? Hey, I'm streaming from my Ari. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dog. So annoying. I love when they do that, and it's like poop book or like you know insta fan yeah yeah and it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, live yeah. and all the graphics are just a little bit off <laughs> yeah. and <like>, insta gain <laughs> what's up insta gainers i'm live i'm having fun on tim tam <laughs> <laughs> why don't you get out of here bubble girl and make some more tim tams <laughs> we gotta make a movie like that we actually have to make like a parody Netflix movie. No, if we make a mo- like, yeah, if we make a mockery of like the, uh, <laughs> in the, the well, I love how that's. By the way, I love Tim Tams. Yeah, they're the best. Uh, yeah, we have to make it, and I me- remember I told you this way back at full screen. No. I said this to you. I was like, I want to make a short film where it's all Viners and every every bit of dialogue as a brand injection yeah 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 right and i was saying i wanted it to be an action movie and it's like all call outs it's like oh fuck he's getting away in, in the brand new 2021 audi s6 <laughs> yeah. i was like that's that's fine because the other mercedes-benz c300 da, 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 with eco boost and then we all get inside it's like oh and even in the same idea i had for that music video which you know may happen one day but we have to do that yeah we have to yeah <laughs> everything fully branded um dialogue is atrocious like it'll just cut to Sets someone empty there's never extras or anything yeah. the world just feels super <laughs> empty and weird dog no and then some people don't even have dialogue they just announce what they are yeah i'm the poor person <laughs> and it cuts to a completely different yeah. scene yeah <laughs> or like super long 
contextual statements. Yeah. Like, Addison, I know your mom died when you were four and you felt really sad about it up until now because you got a date with Corey and it made you feel a little bit better about it and you have some deep-rooted issues because your mom's still dying and you haven't really gotten over it. But I think you should go talk to him. Yeah, I would, but you're just kind of being hard on me ever since your dad broke his two kneecaps in that skiing accident and it completely changed your outlook on life, causing you to be a bit less reserved and a bit more forward thinking. I'm just not in that same place because remember, my mom died in that car accident <laughs> when I was four and I just haven't really recovered from that. Well, here, here's a Beats pill to make you feel better about that. Oh my God, I love this brand new Addison Ray. Oops, <laughs> I love this new song by Baddison Ray. <laughs> and then the teacher comes up. Whoa, is this that new Baddison Ray song available on Tim Tam? <laughs> Tim Tam, but for some people, TikTok. <laughs> and then, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. And they take the whole like 24-year-olds being high schoolers thing to the nth degree. Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of fair cuz you know high schoolers do take trend now. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, they're fucking pretty yoked. Yeah. <laughs> fucking jacked, honestly. By the way, go watch my first acting project ever. It's on Amazon. You can get it. It's called The Boonies. Oh yeah. You go if you want to see a bad performance and bad just generalness. Yeah. Go watch that. <laughs> I feel, uh, you know, I just want to apologize to everyone for ranting about the two most insignificant cultural things. Jake Paul winning a fight on points. and <laughs> It fucking depressed me, though, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. I was, and I was like, every time, every time, I keep, I keep doing this. Every time. Like, and it just made me feel like this was just another, like, crypto scam. Like, it made me feel the same way that those make me feel. Yeah. Where it's like. Oh man, so many people that just got scammed. And this and the the amount of people now like buying the rights to things in it in anticipation of milking them for bad shit later. Like we thought the whole, you know, milking of nostalgia shit was over. Yeah. There was like a period of that where it was like 90s kids be like, you know, it was like a content play. Right. You know, and BuzzFeed would do 90s kids articles and Disney princess shit and whatever. It's like, okay, whatever, fine. And there were movie remakes, right? Because, but now it's just like, now it's just like another level where they get the rights to a script and the rights to a name and the rights to a person. And in 10 years, dog, wait for it. It's going to be, he's sort of all that with the Tupac hologram. <laughs> yeah. No, it's going to be like that. And they're going to get um, Home Alone with Bryce Hall. No, it, you know what it's going to be? It'll be... Yeah, there I am. Another, it'll be a third remake of She's All That, and it's going to be featuring uh, an AI-driven Juice World as the co-main character. And um, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to think of another fucking like awful... Yeah, Tupac, fuck it. Yeah. They'll put Tupac and Juice World digitally into the film. No, the Kid Leroy. Oh, you mean a dead person? Yeah. Sorry, I just tuned in. You were on, you were, two day shipping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, you're on the other. Yeah, <laughs> you're sitting on the couch for that bit. Well, what's funny is that like we've already been through this era like five years ago when they were yeah. plugging YouTubers into shit. Mm. Like they were like you know take buying these cheap scripts, plugging YouTubers in, and thinking oh like people love these guys, it's gonna be a hit. And then <laughs> every project ate the dirt. Yep. Oh, and then man. five years later, for some reason, it's happening all over again. The the weirdest thing was that show on full screen it was created by the guy who created American Horror Story. It had like Amanda Cerny and like some other people. Do you remember? Do you remember what it was called? Um, probably not. But we went to that like goofy premiere. Oh, the full screen thing. Yeah, uh, I think it was called the was deleted. Called. Yeah, 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 bro. That footage was. Man, that was just like the director horned up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I think that's what someone called it. They were like, yo, this is just whoever created American Horror Story. This is just an excuse for him to be a pervert. <laughs> thing made no sense. It was, yeah, it was the same shit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just. Yeah, the only thing is that like back then it happened, you know, like in a vacuum almost because it was like on full screen on Go90 where it's like they didn't have any subscribers. No, just And died. these projects were still eating shit. Yep. 
And now it happens on Netflix in front of everybody in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, damn. I remember building the landing page. Oh for yeah. This. Nash Greer was in that. Yeah. Shout out Nash though. You know, he, he, he fucks with us. Does he? Yeah. I think yeah. He shout like, out Nash Greer. I think he follows us on Twitter or something. Um, yeah, this <clears throat> Alyssa Violet was in that. Yo, they had um a scroll up. The redheaded girl, uh Madeline Brewer, she's been in things. Yeah. yeah she's been, she's like a legit ass actor. I think she's in Black Mirror. Oh, dude, the um the guy that was the guy that was in the uh Boonie show with me. Mm-hmm. Uh his name's Callum Callum Worthy. He's fucking that guy works like crazy. Yeah? Oh yeah. He's now he just uh just like he's in this movie with um wait look it up just search Callum Worthy. I auditioned for this role too and he fucking got it of course <laughs> incredible and I suck. There should be like a Variety article about this recently. Oh this is it. It's a new show with yeah. Donnie Knoxville and Key Keegan Michael mm-hmm. Key mm-hmm. called Reboot I think. Yeah, this, I want to say I've seen this dude in something. I have no memory anymore. He's a beast. Anymore. He's been in a ton of shit. Yeah. But, um. Yeah, Modern Family co-creator. Beast. Sick. But, yeah. Yeah, the Boonies thing, that was Go90, I'm pretty sure. And then Go90 died. Mm-hmm. So, I was part of that, too. They were like, oh, you're an influencer? Let's plug you into this. And also, I love the director for that, but, you know, it wasn't, it was, it was bound not to work, I think. Just trying, yeah. I guess, you know, I, I say all this because I'm hoping, you know, I say this stuff because what I really want is I want to read at least 10 comments from people that go, nah, man, I, I feel you. Like, I, I still watch movies and, like, the new stuff makes me feel bad. Yeah. That's li- – that, Oh. What? You know what I watched last night? What? Inglorious Bastards. <laughs> just to rinse, rinse my mind of everything <laughs> and just feel again. Oh my god, that first scene? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You know which one I'm talking about? Um uh when the SS officer yes, comes yes. to like the French farmhouse yes. and sits down and asks for milk. Super dark. Switches to English and then mm-hmm. switches back to French. Oh my god. Yeah. Seven minutes and you're like moved. Mm-hmm. You know? It's like you feel disgusted and yeah. horrified. And then the movie starts. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. And I just have to caveat and say, like, I don't think I'm some out of this world, like, highly accomplished creative person. But as a as a small, bald, fucking consumer loser, I know good media when I see it. Yeah. And it just mm, gets on my nerves. All the bad shit just gets so much attention. You know what is good? What? Um, I wish you would leave. Season, season two. two? I've heard mixed reviews. Oh, I liked it. Some of them are not good. Okay. But the first episode, there's two of them in there that are unbelievably funny. Like I was laughing out loud on the couch by myself. That never happens. <laughs> nice. Um, I do want to, actually, we can talk about this in the bonus. Yeah. My flipping of NFTs that I've been doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can. We can talk about it in the bonus. I made 500 bucks, but you know, whatever. Let's talk about it in the bonus. You guys don't want to hear about that. It's 500 bucks that I made flipping a picture, <laughs> but it's fine. Bro, uh, <clears throat> I do have to call out one other thing for the Jake Paul fight that is not a negative thing at all, but it's so funny. The dude, ah, he fought on the card. What's his name? Hold on. Uh, ah. Damn it. Okay, love and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna figure it out. Figure it out. Hold on, just just pause, just pause, just pause. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> just wait, just wait. It matters. Fucking hold on. Okay. Sorry. Montana Love is the dude's name. Okay. Uh, who fought on the card. By the way, what you missed on the card, they, they also had a barstool segment where Dave Portnoy and Big Cat would talk <laughs> about their bets. The most non 
boxing thing I've ever seen. Okay. It would just abruptly cut to them and then it'd just be Portnoy. I was like, well, I lost money there. I've got five grand on this. Da, 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 da. And they're just like promoting sports betting. Like uh, on boxing or just generally? They were betting on the fight. Oh, okay. And they're just sort of like encouraging. Oh, using the Barstool sports book thing? Yeah. They have their own betting app. Yeah. And like That's Barstool like- Sports was like on like the main sponsor on the ring. And I just thought that was crazy. That felt like some Black Mirror shit, dude. Yeah. Just like two guys in the middle of an event being like, yeah, like put your money on. Yeah. You might win. Yeah. Um, so the dude Montana Love, <laughs> he's, I guess he also makes music. And during his walkout, the announcer goes, Montana Love, not just a boxer, but he's also a bar spitter. <laughs> <laughs> he's just released a mixtape. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I'm like, that has to go on his next music project. <laughs> As an intro? Yeah. Or something? Yeah. He's a bar spitter. spitter. He's a bar spitter. Some chor- it's like chor- <laughs> choir comes in. Ah! Told you motherfuckers I'm back. Oh, that's so good. That dude's a good ass boxer. I can picture that on the teleprompter. Yeah. Not only a boxer, but a bar spitter. spitter. What's that mean? <laughs> he just recently put out a mixtape. Mixtape? And now he's looking to mix it up tonight with the left and rights. <laughs> boxing is honestly bar. Yeah, <laughs> boxing is so funny, like because it's so archaic. It has so many remnants of the fucking twenties. Like yeah. all the ring announcers, minus you know Michael Bufford, they're all like, "And now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it's time for your main event in the red corner." You know, and they fucking uh, what's the thing they say? Like oh yeah, when they say "Don't hit below the belt." That's so funny to me because in MMA, it's just like touch gloves, trick sales all the time. Yeah, yeah fight clean. You know, you don't do anything dirty. You know, if you want to touch, go ahead now. But boxing is like, all right, now, no hits below this line. Keep your hands up here, <laughs> eyes on me. If I say stop, you're going to stop. <laughs> and they just get close. They slap each other around. It's like, yep, 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 yep. Resume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's so old. Yeah. And the fact that anyone can get in there and just like bounce around and then throw a couple combos like, oh, he's killing him. He's more. One, two, three. Hits him with the upper whammy. Now he's, I don't know, man. It just doesn't feel like a real sport. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. It's cricket for uh, arguments or something like whatever. Yeah. That's it. That's good. Yeah. I got nothing for that. You're right. You're just No, right. it's just old. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> and you know what they should have did? Jake Paul should come back, but whoever he fights next, they have to fight the old fucking, like, the Irish boxing way. Eh. Like, one foot up. Yeah. Rolling the hands back. Fisticuffs? Yeah, fisticuffs. That's the only way it could be respect. Dog, he just commits himself to, like, the most difficult way to fight, so he takes the least amount of damage. <laughs> That's what we need to do. What? We need to commit to, like, a fisticuffs league. You know, something that like appears difficult, but it's it's such a or like leg wrestling or something like that. Um, we could spend like two years learning how to break dance, like perfecting like capoeira. Okay, capoeira, and yeah. we could do that Eddie yeah. Gordo shit. Yeah, although you could probably get fucked up doing that. What is that? Eddie Gordo from Tekken. It's like the Brazilian like break it? dance fighting style. Oh, okay, yeah. Occasionally, a dude in MMA will do some of that shit and like land. It's crazy. Hmm. Um. Yeah. Uh, let's um talk about some angry comments. Yeah. <laughs> angry comments, dude. Let's go in on our fans. Let's let's go in on fans. I got called defensive recently in a comment. No way, really, dude. You sound so defensive lately. <laughs> yeah. What are you mad or something? Yeah. What? Whoa, we got you mad. Whoa, it seems like you're pissed that I said your fucking haircut looks like a little girl's cut, dude. <laughs> oh well. Here, I actually did get destroyed recently on the last episode from these people y'all are gonna hate on the haircut but jokes on you he looks fantastic while surfing i mean i don't really get that one is that just because my hair would be wet yeah so it wouldn't look like it actually looks yeah <laughs> matted down the haircut speaks of godly man that one's funny yeah like a churchgoer yeah yeah that's funny um that haircut specifically is the most bizarre choice you could possibly make. Yeah, the best one was like, so you decide to cut it to the awkward phase? <laughs> I that know. Was, was I, that's so what funny. I thought of when I looked in the mirror afterwards. Here's how it went down, okay? 
Wait, like Cody's never... hair makes him look like Kira Knightley and Bend it <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. What you want to. And <laughs> someone said I look like the first picture that pops up when you Google uh, Millie Bobby Brown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All, all of which are true. Okay, I didn't. I never said that I liked the haircut. I never said that. I just got a haircut, and so I came in. I was like, I got a rocket. There's nothing else I can do. Yeah. I, uh, I got this new guy who wasn't bad at all. Like the cut is really good, and he's he's like a you know he he knows what's. I don't know. He just knows how to cut style, I guess. And he was like, we should do a 90s thing. And I was like, I want to go short. And he's like, we're going to do a 90s thing. And I was like, let's do a 90s thing. Fuck it. And so he cut my hair. And like when it's dry and styled like he wanted it, it, I mean, you could look at like old pictures of people in the 90s and be like, I see what he was going for. Yeah. Right. But then for me, it's like I, you know, I just, I had such long hair. I kind of wanted it to just go all the way. Yeah. And so it is like that weird middle period. Yeah. But I don't really give a fuck anymore, dude. I'm dirty. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I'll look stupid. I don't care at all. Yeah. Someone's like, he looks like the Wendy's girl. Not really. You need more like, you definitely need more pigtail. Pippi Longstock and shit. Yeah, I don't care, you know? I might bleach it again. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah, you definitely look Kira Knightley. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Yeah. You should have bleached it, man. That's what you're missing. You need bleach in there. <laughs> look at it. You need to go full boy band. <laughs> yeah, bro. We should bleach your hair for one episode. Yeah. It should be the cold open. I want to do that again. Dunking your head in acid. Yeah. Just the tips. All right, we got some fun stuff coming up in the bonus episode, guys. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll say something <clears throat> funny. It takes us two hours, but we'll get there. Yeah, we got. Um, well, I'm gonna talk talk about all the NFT flipping that I've been doing for the last week. Yeah, because I'm in it now. I'm neck deep. Yeah, that's. I, I want to know. I'm curious to get in. Um, and we got. We got uh, so much other shit that we could have talked about. We not talk about. A lot. Go back to the. 17. Hey, you know what? Here, pull pull the sidebar up. We'll hype up the bonus episode right now. Ready? Coming up in the bone zone, 17-year-old landlord bullying hotline for landlords. Oh, that's my bitch. <laughs> Donda's random release. Flipping NFTs and Gary Vaynerchuk personality test. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the deal with Drake's new album cover? Sold, man. Certified lover boy. He's also a certified bar spitter. Cody's coming out with a mixtape <laughs> next week. <laughs> All right, guys. Tune in the bonus. Right, Listen to the spits and bars. All right. Fucking later. I don't later. care. I don't care. I don't care. So you thought the fight was good? Yeah, I thought yeah. it was great. Same, I loved it. I loved how it ended up. Such a good result. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha.